We stand out of respect for the words and works of Jesus recorded for us today in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 1. This parable will also serve as our sermon text today. Indeed, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. After agreeing to pay the workers a denarius for the day, he sent them into his vineyard. He also went about the the third hour, and saw others standing unemployed in the marketplace. To these, he said, you also go into the vineyard, and I will give you whatever is right. So they went. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did the same thing. When he went out about the eleventh hour, he found others standing unemployed. He said to them, why have you stood here all day unemployed? They said to him, because no one hired us. He told them, you also go into the vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last group and ending with the first. When those who were hired around the 11th hour came, they each received a denarius. When those who were hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but they each received a denarius too. After they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Those who were last worked one hour, and you made them equal to us, who have endured the burden of the day and the scorching heat? But he answered one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not make an agreement with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go. I want to give to the last one hired the same as I also gave to you. Can't I do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? In the same way, the last will be first, and the first last. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Why are you here this morning? Are you here to tell the people around you as you came in today or as you leave today all the good things you did this last week? Are you here that hopefully you hear some words today that make you feel really good about yourself and how good you are compared to your neighbors? You had a good week, a pat on the back, maybe in a placebo to get you through another week? Are you here because you're hoping that if you put in the time with God, he'll put out for you with more things, he'll, he'll give you more blessing, he'll help you through your hardship, he'll make your life easier? Are you here because you think you should be? Because your parents told you to? Your family expects you to? That your own ego is saying that it's probably a good thing if you go to church, it makes you look good? feels good. Those are very common reasons why people go to church. It's probably the most common, some of those things are the most common reasons that people look out, look to religion and go to church to find things that make them feel like they are good people. And they like the thought of going to a a God who can potentially help them get ahead in life, that if, they're, if they try really hard and they're working hard to improve themselves, that God will acknowledge that and, and applaud them for their moral character and ability. And he will reward them with his great goodness and, and they'll have blessing upon blessing and they will be successful and they'll make it through on top. Here's the problem, if that was one of the thoughts that you had on the way in today, you're not going to get it. That's not what Christianity is about. So many people do come to church for those things, but sadly, when you come to Christianity, this is not a a deal you work with God when you come in. (laughs) This is not a place to... Pat yourselves on the back where you will get rewarded for your labor 
for God and you will be treated with the highest dignity and you will be sitting at the right hand of God in heaven because you're just that great of a person. And you've been working for God for a very long time and so you will get this massive payday when you get to heaven. That's not Christianity. Maybe that's news to you or at least the way I'm saying it is a way you haven't thought about it before. And maybe you think, well, if, if, I don't, if life's not going to be easier this week, then maybe I should leave. Maybe coming to church isn't as good as I thought if I'm not going to get a pat on the back and the pastor's not going to tell me that I'm a great person today. Then why am I here? I hear enough from my own ego and from other people that I'm not a great person and I don't do everything right and I have things to work on and I'm a failure. Why do I need to go to church to hear God tell me that too. And sadly, that's why, because if you think, like, that doesn't sound very appealing. You're right. A lot of people don't come to church for those very reasons because they think, why would I go to church if all I'm going to hear is condemnation and judgment? And I'm not going to get what I feel I deserve. I'm not going to hear about a God who is fair who gives me what I should have coming to me. Instead, I hear that God's not fair, and he doesn't give me payment for all the good that I have done. Maybe that bothers you too, and you think for a second, yeah, why am I here? (laughs) People react one of two ways as they come to that realization that those things will not be satisfied in a true Christian church. They either say, well, that's it. I don't need God. I don't need a God who's going to tell me that. I'll go somewhere else where they'll tell me I'm a good person and they'll give me a reward for being there and they'll pat me on the back and they'll make me feel really good about myself no matter what's going on in here. And they'll stop listening to God and they won't come back. Or, and I pray that's why you are all here today, is that you want to hear God out. You want to listen a little bit longer and maybe see why God not being fair, why him not paying what you deserve, is a very, very good thing. And hearing that that reality, that God doesn't treat you like a worker, And that he doesn't reward you based on how much you've done for him and how good of a person you are. That that's a very, very good and wonderful thing. And once you hear why, you'll you'll be very thankful that it's not different. You guys are all still here. Good. I'm glad. Because I hope you're here for another reason. See, Jesus told this parable that we just heard from Matthew 20 to his disciples. Because his disciples were thinking very similar to the way most people do when they come to church. Just before this, they were fighting with each other about which one of them was the greatest. They said, I think I'm a little bit higher in God's kingdom than you. Did you see the way that, you know, I handled that situation back there? Did you see the way I stood up for Jesus? Did you see the things that I was able to do by God's power? Man, I think God loves me the most because I've been working hard here. And, I mean, just think about it. We're the first ones to follow Jesus. And so just in general, the, the 12 of us are going to be at the top of the top because we're awesome. And we've been doing so much for God already. We're going to get those highest seats It's going to be great. And Jesus has just overheard this conversation from his disciples. And so he tells this parable to help them totally see differently the relationship between them and God and the way God's kingdom works. And so he tells them about a landowner who has a vineyard, something like this beautiful vineyard behind me. And he goes out at the beginning of the day and gets some workers and he says, I promise to give you a denarius if you work for the whole day. A normal day's wage. This seems very awesome and wonderful to those workers. So they said, yes, that sounds great. 
then three hours later, he goes out again. He sees more workers. He's like, well, I need more workers, so how about you guys go? And I'll, I'll pay you what's right. And he said, okay, that sounds great. Three hours later, he does the same thing, gets more workers because he needs more. And they say, all right, that sounds great. You pay us what's right at the end of the day, and, and we'll trust you. Goes out three hours later, does it again. And then he even goes out one hour before the end of the workday. And he sees that there's still workers standing there, you know, standing around waiting to get picked up to go to some place to work. And he says, why are you still standing here? Well, no one hired us. Well, come on down. I'll pay you what's right. Work in my vineyard for one hour. Then he goes to pay all his workers and he has the last ones go first and he pays the last ones a denarius, the full day's wage. That's strange. That's generous. And as he goes, he pays the next group the same and the next group the same. But it says the first group is expecting, well, we've been here all day, naturally thinking if he paid them a denarius, he's going to pay us five or more. But he pays them the same. And they're like, that doesn't make sense. That's not fair. And they go up to the master and they say, that's not fair. Why would you pay them the same thing? We've been out in the field all day working our tails off in your vineyard. And yet you pay the ones who were there for an hour the same. That's not fair to treat us equally. And the master responds, have I done wrong to you? Did I not agree with you at the beginning of the day that this is the amount that you would get from me? I promised that you would get a reward from me. But now, because I'm generous to them, you are jealous? What is it to you what I do with my money? Take what I promised and go. Now what is Jesus trying to teach his disciples? And what is he trying to teach you? about being a worker and being in God's kingdom. Because your worker's in his field too. Just like the disciples, you've come in a little bit longer down the road, but some of you have been in God's kingdom for a very long time. You were baptized into the faith maybe when you were a child. And ever since you've been going to church with your parents, or some of you maybe only an hour ago came into the church learning about Jesus and everything that he's given, you feel like now you finally got to experience what it's all about and now you have entered into his kingdom only a short time ago. What is Jesus telling you? Well, he's teaching you that God's not fair. And here's why that's a really, really, really good thing. See, really, if you take a step back from that parable, this is the amazing thing that Jesus is trying to teach. The master's always gracious. He's gracious to those that he lets work in his field for a full day. Him promising to give a denarius to the one who would be there all day wasn't something that they deserved. It was still a gift. And so at the end of the day, when he gives a denarius to all, Jesus' point is this. God is incredibly gracious to all. And here's why that's a really good thing. Because if God did treat us like a boss-worker relationship, if he did base his reward given to us on our behavior, on our scorecard, on how well we've done in his kingdom. Do you want to know what the fair payment would be for you? Death upon death. All the work-related incidents you've had, all the times you've abused the opportunity to be in God's kingdom, all the times that you have insulted your fellow workers, that you have not made faithful use of all the gifts God has given you, all the times you've spit in God's face and in his kingdom, the, all the times you've wasted his good fruit, you've been a terrible worker. 
if God would reward you based on your work behavior and on your record, you would have less than a denarius. You would be given nothing. Nothing good. Instead, God would have to punish you. He would have to extract from you all that you took from him and other people in your life. Because you're a sinner. You've broken his code over and over again. You've broken the rules. You've stepped on people's toes. You've destroyed his property. You've abused your own body. So much so that if God rewarded you for your behavior, if he was fair, he would let you die and then stay dead forever in hell. You don't want God to be fair. Because if he was, you would not get to be in his kingdom anymore. And you wouldn't deserve to work in his kingdom at all. Because you can't do it perfectly. This is why it's extremely comforting when Jesus says at the end of this that the master is gracious. That he doesn't just give people what they deserve. He gives what he promises, regardless of how well we work in his kingdom. God is unfair to the point that he gave us so much. He promised so much before we spent a single day working in his kingdom. Before he called us by the gospel, before he baptized us, before you came into these walls for the first time, God already had given so much to guarantee you a place in his kingdom forever. He gave his one and only son so that he could be so gracious to you every time you failed, every time you got jealous, every time you were like these workers and you grumbled because you thought you deserved more from a God who should give you nothing. He chooses to give you everything. By sending his son unfairly to suffer the punishment for all your sin. To carry it on his back so that he can unfairly give you the life that Jesus deserves. That Jesus earned by what he did. That Jesus should have kept for himself and yet he gave it to you by suffering and dying on a cross. By feeling the pain of death and hell. By suffering that punishment in your place. That's unfair to Jesus, and it's unfair to you. And yet that's what the Father has chosen to do, because he's not fair. He's inconceivably gracious. And I pray that is why you are here today. Not because you expect God to pay you for how good you have been. Not so you can just put the people down around you and say, I'm better than them because I've been in the church longer or I've done this for the church or I've given this much or did you see what I did last week or have you seen the great father, the great wife, the great um, spouse, the great worker, whatever it is, if that's your identity, if you present that to God, because of that, I should have more from God and my life should be easy. Instead of all of that, you came here today knowing you don't deserve anything from God. But you also know that God loves you. And he chooses to pour out grace upon grace on you. To give you the grace that you don't deserve that should have been left only for his perfect son, Jesus Christ. But he gives it to you. And that you can enter these doors on a Sunday morning coming from a messy week with a lot of failures, with a crazy world. And you can come in here and sit down and you get to, at the beginning of the service, confess your sins. And say, Lord, forgive me. And you get to hear God say, you know that he will because you know he's gracious. He will say to you, I forgive you. Because of my son. You are right with God. Because God so loves you. And then you get to leave these walls after getting built up through the word, hearing more about God and his graciousness to you. 
And you get to partake in the Lord's body and blood to be strengthened in that faith, to be encouraged. God keeps giving you more and more and more so that when you leave here today, you get to go out in the harvest field. You get to go in the vineyard and say, how much longer do I get to work in this field? How much longer do I get to be a servant in God's kingdom? Because I want to serve God with everything I've got. Just like Paul said, whether I live or die, whether I die today or I die in 10 years or I die in 40, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. I get one more day to work in God's kingdom and I am blessed for each and every one of those days. I get to go out and tell people about Jesus. I get to tell everyone how much he loves me. I get to show them the hope that I have that I will live forever no matter how much I fail tomorrow, that God loves me. And that he loves you too. And even if you're coming in at the 11th hour, he wants you. You give one hour, you get to serve him too. Because God's going to love you anyway. Even if you believe in him on your deathbed, he'll give you the kingdom. Not because you did it, but because he gives it. So why are you here? Hopefully to get built up, strengthened in the faith, encouraged by the grace of God so that you can go out and work in God's kingdom joyfully, even in times such as these, especially in times such as these, because people need hope. They need strength. They need grace. And only God gives that unfair grace to human beings like you and me. You know that. Now go share it. May we go out with joy and excitement because we know why we're here. We're here because Jesus loves us. And he has given us a task to do when we leave these halls. Let us go out joyfully and share the reason we come here. Amen.